The Virgin Islands International Business and Finance Center sees an incredible three-year high. What exactly does this say about the BVI's financial services industry? And tributes pouring as our territory mourns the loss of a cultural icon. Don't miss it as we deliver honest and impartial news right here on 284 News. I'm Javon Wilson. And I'm Ron Grant. The Eslin Henry Roche Learning Center, the territory's first special education school, celebrated its 46th birthday on October 12, 2018. Students commemorated the day by singing the happy birthday song. The school was first established by the BVI Red Cross and opened its doors in 1972 as Fort Charlotte Children's Center in McNamara. The two staff members at the time were Mrs. Eslin Henry Roche, the principal, and Miss Alice Leonard, the janitor and helper. On March 13, 1998, Fort Charlotte Children's Center was officially renamed Eslin Henry Roche Learning Center in honor of its first principal. Present principal of the school, Mrs. Vancey Tart Huggins, had this to say about the school's 46th year milestone and their vision for moving forward. My philosophy is that our children can learn irrespective of their disability. They have the ability to enhance their learning aptitude and heighten their intelligence. And if we give them that work tool and the support, they definitely can learn. So I don't underestimate any child. We want our children to be productive people. So we look at their whole being. We look at their cognitive development and we use an instrument that was produced by Farnstein. So we have the Farnstein Instrumental Enrichment and an offspring to that, which is called Equipping Mind. And these tools now help to build the children's memory, their attention, their processing and comprehension skills. And I think after we're able to tap into their cognitive skills, we can now go on because they have an, a thinking, they can think for themselves, and they know now that they can advance. Persons who are unsuccessful at completing their high school certification are now being afforded a second chance at academic excellence with the launch of the Virgin Islands High School Certificate Program. The event hosted at Morin's on October 15th welcomed scores of residents, which served as a clear indicator of the importance of this initiative. Aesthetic Minister of Education and Culture, Honorable Myron V. Walwyn, expressed that one of the mandates I gave my ministry was to ensure that education remains a lifelong process in our community. This means that education should not only be extended to primary, secondary, and tertiary levels, but it must be one where we create opportunities for all the people in the Virgin Islands to advance in their educational pursuits regardless of their age or circumstances, he said. This was the thought process that birthed the idea of the project, which will be extended to persons 18 years or older, free of cost, providing that you pass each subject exam on the first try. Failure to do so will result in a cost of $40 per subject to reset the exam. The program, which extends territory-wide, entails a mandatory four core subjects, mathematics, English language, social studies, and science to be graded. And though not graded, a life skill class is also required to be completed to indicate the successful completion of the project. Students will also have access to the online learning hub, which will fully equip them with all learning materials needed, in addition to quizzes and a live chat feature to encourage group discussions. In the event that further assistance is needed, tutors for the respective subjects can be reached via the website. Despite being designed with flexibility, allowing you to learn at your own pace, the program still remains a faster alternative to night school, with exams being offered in February and October of every year. The minister strictly reminded the audience that this program is for persons that can study independently, stressing the importance of dedication and discipline to guarantee its completion. 18-year-old attendee Nigel Victor, among many others, is very excited about the incentive. Social studies is my favorite subject, but I intend to pursue at least three of the four subjects to begin with. Upon completion, I intend to pursue my career in the construction field, said the proud Bellevue resident. In a fastly advancing world, your high school certificate serves as a primary requirement and encourages higher wages and a sense of pride once achieved. 
the Virgin Islands High School Certificate Program Certificate will also be accepted at HLSCC for those in hopes of acquiring higher education. Absolutely amazing opportunity. A secure evaluation system is being introduced whereby members of the general public will be able to rate how government workers serve them. The system, which will be on an online platform, is scheduled to launch in November, Deputy Governor David Archer Jr. has said. Under the system, public servants who receive five or more commendations will be accepted into a group known as the Public Service Customer Service Club. This club will comprise of bronze, silver, platinum, and elite members, and persons will be able to climb the various levels based on the number of commendations they receive from the public. On the flip side of that is, just as you can commend someone, you can also say persons have not served you well, Archer said. He said the system will be primarily run from the office of the deputy governor by trained professionals. This, he said, will prevent department heads and other public servants from interfering with whatever reviews they may receive. For example, if someone commends my department or complains about me and my department, I can't get away from that. I can't hide it. I can't bury it. If it says the deputy governor served me wrongly, then that will be part of a formal record. No one is actually able to erase a record. The public may only access the system electronically where they will be required to fill a brief questionnaire on how they were served by a particular public servant in one of the various government departments. There is also the option of entering personal comments. We are going to have monthly stats on the amount of commendations that come into a department and the amount of complaints for service that comes into this and it's going to be centrally driven, Archer said. Immigration and labor are said to be among the first departments the system will be introduced to. You know, Ron, I think this is a great initiative indeed um, as we try to commend the good efforts of our civil servants. But at the same time, I know, you know, I do believe there's a flip side. We yeah, have to be very is. mindful um, of vind vindictive people um, who Correct. just might be out there to downgrade I the services of our public service workers. Um, nevertheless, we do hope that it is for a greater good. I think it will be in, uh, in the interim. All right. The recycling program in Virgin Garda, which serves as a collaborative initiative between the Department of Waste Management, Green VI sponsors and other stakeholders, has been restored. As we gear toward a safer, greener territory, the program was revitalized to reduce the territory's reliance on landfill disposal and its incurred hazardous factors. Mr. Greg Massacote, manager at the Department of Waste Management, said the recycling program, which was launched prior to 2017 in Virgin Gorda and Yosemite Dyke, was revamped and is expected to extend throughout the territory. The damages incurred during our 2017 disaster would have brought the program to a halt, but was recently replaced with new and improved eco-friendly bins made with wooden pallets by local artisans Mr. Gleason Brooks and Mr. Rashley Bob. The bins, which vary in size, are compartmentalized to facilitate glass, plastics, and aluminum. Mr. Gregg went on to mention the current exploration of an electronic application that will aim to help our residents with the convenience of locating the closest recycling bin. Once retrieved, the recyclables will then be transformed by local recyclers or further be exported out of the BVI. This program is a clear indicator of the department and its partners' eagerness to embark on prospects of recycling and more eco-friendly choices that will preserve and prolong health for the residents of the British Virgin Islands. Governor Kenneth Mapp paid a courtesy visit to the BVI on October 16, 2018 and had a full afternoon of activities. The governor, who is in a dead heat with the Democratic nominee for governor, Albert Bryan Jr. for re-election, spent the afternoon meeting with the governor, August Jaspert, along with acting premier, Dr. The Honorable Kedrick D. Pickering, and opposition leader, Honorable Andrew Foy. The governor, who is seeking a second four-year term in the American territory, also held a meet and greet with the local press and members of the public. Is business slow? Cash flow down? Hosting an upcoming event? We can help. Advertise with 284 Media and take your business or event to the next level by enhancing your present marketing and messaging strategies. Allow our team of experts to create a personalized ad that sets your business apart from all the rest. This could be your business or event. So, what are you waiting for? Contact our marketing team at 284 Media at cctbvi.com. Advertising with us works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Father Jesus. 
Alonia Long Lake Church Service. Hmm. Alright, let me enjoy the rest of it then. Next customer in line, please. Wait, hold on a second. Yes, Sonny Boy, come. Yes, Sonny. Good morning. Good morning, Sonny Boy. You must have cut fun tapping. It's okay, it's okay, I'll take care of it. What? No, no man, you can tell me. How may I assist you? Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> You want a top of power? Eh? You want a top of power? Eh? Join the prepaid party with CCT and enjoy more affordable data plans, more top up promotions, more savings with hero bundles, and more value for your money each and every Tuesday with Top Up Turn Up Tuesday. Visit a CCT store today or anywhere CCT Top Up is sold and top up your phone. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. You want Top Up Power? Eh? In a phase where the territory is fixated on recovery and rebuilding, Mr. Zebulon McLean, Chief Fire Officer, is imploring residents of the British Virgin Islands to exercise mindfulness and to embrace the building safety codes. Despite our anxiousness to rebuild fast, we ought to be very mindful to the fire safety codes and regulations. This is of paramount importance in the prevention of fires and aids the department's efficiency in dealing with emergency cases, he said. Fire Safety Week was observed last week in the BVI to raise awareness on preventative measures and survival techniques. The initiative was very timely, he said. Mr. McLean went on to mention that the department is also currently faced, faced sorry, with a few challenges. There is a shortage of fire trucks and due to damages incurred during Irma and Maria, the headquarters was physically damaged, which also compromises operation and heightens fear among the staff who might be uncomfortable with the physical conditions, he said. Despite the setbacks, Mr. McLean and his department remains committed to the safety of the residents of the British Virgin Islands. The week-long activity lineup included a church service previously held on October 7th, fire safety lectures by invitation, which was stretched throughout the week, and a demonstration drill held on Thursday, October 11th on the festival grounds to give residents a first-hand insight on how the department responds in cases of emergencies. In closing, the CFO reminded the territory of this year's theme for Fire Safety Awareness Week, which was Make Fire Safety Your Routine, Fire Safety Awareness 2018. Well, Giovanna, I actually just purchased a uh fire extinguisher for my house, so I think Look we're in good you, shape. Look being uh, taking Absolutely. precautionary measures. That's important. Good going, Ron. <laughs> Thank you. Colleen Scatliff of Humptum's Gut has confessed that a quantity of cocaine and cannabis found in his home two years ago belonged to him and that he intended to distribute it. Halim Scatlick pleaded guilty to possession of a controlled drug and possession of a controlled drug with intent to supply to another when he stood before a magistrate, Crystal and Benjamin. It is alleged that on July 21st, 2016, police, uh, police executed a search warrant at Scatlick's home and discovered 39 grams of cannabis and 18 grams of cocaine. The cannabis was found in six dime bags and in a white plastic bottle, while the cocaine was found in a living room area beneath a retractable sofa. I was holding it for someone, he reportedly told police at the time of the discovery. He was subsequently arrested and brought to the Rotom police station where he was charged. Attorney Nelson Samuel, who represents Scatliff, told the court that his client is remorseful. The offender will be sentenced on October 23, 2018. Scatliff is currently on remand for other offenses. A 14% increase was recorded with the incorporation of 9,798 new companies between January and March of this year on the BVI Financial Services Commission's FSC's quarterly report. The achievement, which was suggestive of a consecutive three-year rise, with the highest number of new incorporations in the BVI within the first quarter of the year since 2015, surfaced despite the setbacks of Irma and Maria. In early 2018, we were all very much still in recovery mode, just three months after so many homes and businesses across the islands were destroyed. To see that we had our best quarter in, for co incorporations for three years in that period is encouraging indeed, said Interim Executive Director of BVI Finance, Lerna Smith. Since Irma and Maria struck, our mantra has been that we must rebuild BVI stronger than it was before the hurricanes. I am confident 
that we will achieve this because of the spirit, quality, and determination of the professionals who work to offer the global business community a unique center for their international business needs. Mr. Smith also attributed the achievements to FSC and the rest of the territory's financial services industry, as well as the Limited Partnership Act, which was legally enacted at the beginning of this year and served as a major contributing factor to the astonishing achievement. The provisions under the Act are said to be conducive and has seemingly attracted more investors to the BVI's shore. That is absolutely good news for the financial services industry. Which, uh, for those who don't know, contributes 60% of revenue to the BVI's economy. Absolutely. His account was not believable. Those were the words of Senior Magistrate Tamia Richards when Haiti National Luke Alloy was found guilty of being part of a smuggling ring that sneaked 21 immigrants into the British Virgin Islands last year. She said he is not convincing, and she is convinced beyond a reasonable doubt that Alloy was working with the boat captain of the operation, Carwell Potter, who pleaded guilty months ago and is currently serving a 30-month sentence. The magistrate further said she believes that the $1,400 found on Eloy on the day in question was in part or in whole the payment for his crime. In handing down the verdict, Richard said by Eloy's own account of the horroring experience that night, it made no sense that he opted to remain on board with Potter while every other illegal immigrant disembarked. She said if he was being smuggled, as he claimed, he would have lunged at the opportunity to step foot on dry land and get away from Potter who he said had promised to bring them to the U.S. Virgin Islands. The senior magistrate further said the witnesses who testified that Eloy was the interpreter and helper to Potter was believable. Eloy, who had only pleaded guilty to illegal entry, is scheduled to be sentenced on November 1st, 2018. Is business slow? Cash flow down? Hosting an upcoming event? We can help. Advertise with 284 Media and take your business or event to the next level by enhancing your present marketing and messaging strategies. Allow our team of experts to create a personalized ad that sets your business apart from all the rest. This could be your business or event. So, what are you waiting for? Contact our marketing team at 284media at cctbvi.com. Advertising with us works. Yeah. Father Jesus, that line you along like church service. Hmm. Alright, let me enjoy the rest of it then. Next customer line, please. Wait, hold on a second. Yes, Sonny Boy, come, yes, Sonny. Good morning. Good morning, Sonny Boy, over there. You must have cut fun tapping. It's okay, it's okay, I'll take care of it. What? No, no man, you can take care of me. How may I assist you? Baby. Yes, yes. <laughs> you want a top of power? Eh? You want a top of power? Eh? Join the prepaid party with CCT and enjoy more affordable data plans, more top-up promotions, more savings with hero bundles, and more value for your money each and every Tuesday with Top-Up Turn-Up Tuesday. Visit a CCT store today or anywhere CCT top-up is sold and top-up your phone. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, you want top-up or what? Law enforcement in the neighboring U.S. Virgin Islands have arrested a crew member of a local ferry company who allegedly had 5.18 kilos of cocaine aboard the vessel. Charged with possession of a controlled substance with intent to distribute is Shane Clarence Freeman, the Virgin Islands Daily News reports. It is alleged that the U.S. Virgin Islands law enforcement discovered the drugs aboard the Native Sun, which offers ferry services between Tortola BVI and St. Thomas USVI. The drugs were allegedly found last week in a shopping bag hidden behind an air conditioning unit aboard the vessel. It is reported that the bag contained bricks of a substance that allegedly fuel tested positive for cocaine. The USBI media reported that the other crew members allegedly claimed to have seen the accused man bring the bag in question aboard the vessel. It is further reported that a narcotics dog was alerted to the presence of the drug on Freeman's person. October, designated as Breast Cancer Awareness Month, is being celebrated in the BVI as an annual campaign to raise awareness of breast cancer risks, the value of screening and early detection, and treatment options available both to men and women who are diagnosed with one of the many forms of cancer, breast cancer. 
Gloria Foy, president of the BVI Cancer Society, said, though we do not have an estimation of local cases due to the absence of a national cancer registry, the numbers are worrying with an alarming 9 out of 10 cancer applications being estimated to be breast cancer. Fortunately, the government is working on implementing a registry within a few months, which will be able to assess the local cases. Mistress Foy mentioned that we have experienced an increase in the local cases with younger people being diagnosed, which serves as an, as an indication, sorry, that we might be doing something wrong in the BVI. She's advocating that we sort out garbage since the burning of plastic emits dangerous cancer-causing chemicals and further stressed the importance of the government fixing the incinerator, which will reduce the territory's reliance on burning garbage. Beating the issue of cancer will take a holistic, collaborative approach. Among the suggestions are us taking a pro-environment stand by refusing to permit the import of plastics or other cancer-causing materials, growing our own food, which will decrease our dependence on chemical-filled imported foods, and of course, living a more stress-free life. Some of the upcoming activities include the Run or Walk event on October 20th, Paint the Town Pink on October 26th, where all residents, of course, are encouraged to wear pink to raise cancer awareness. And let's whine about it on October 27th, which examines a therapeutic approach to healing. I'm happy to hear her speak about the importance of both men and women getting tested, because sometimes we there's a little stereotype in thinking that only women are affected by cancer, but it's definitely all persons. It's a somber scene here at the House of Assembly, where the Honorable Dolores Christopher once served. Honorable Christopher passed away yesterday, October 16, 2018, just before 3 p.m. Inside, House members pause for a moment of silence as they remember their colleague that stood with them, once fighting for the people of this territory. She has been remembered as a cultural icon and will truly be missed. The outspoken representative and indigenous Virgin Islander has been regarded as an authority figure when it came to the Virgin Islands culture. She pushed for the heritage and culture of the BVI to be preserved at all costs. She also called for the building of a national museum to preserve the Virgin Islands cultural heritage. All across the territory, residents and legislators paid respect to their colleague and friend. Premier Dr. The Honorable D. Orlando Smith said Dolores had been a strong member of the NDP and in the House of Assembly, always spoke her mind as she represented the people of this territory. I know that everyone who lives here will miss her voice. Deputy Premier Honorable Kedrick Pickering said she was a true definition of a person who exuded national pride, the true essence of an indigenous Virgin Islander. Minister of Communications and Works, the Honorable Mark Vanceboe said, the territory has lost a daughter of the soil who undoubtedly had the interests of her beloved country at heart. This is Honorable Alvaro Duque, representative of District 6. It's really sad. It's a sad day in our history. Uh, we mourn the loss of Honorable Dolores Christopher. We sat together in the house for many years. We we were not just friends in the house, but friends outside of dealing with um, the affairs of this country. And uh, we have lost our cultural icon. Christopher was first elected as a legislator in 2003. She was appointed Deputy Speaker of the House in 2011 and has served as the head of the Trade Investment and Promotions Department, Senior Administrative Officer and Administrative Officer in the then Office of the Chief Minister. We all would remember the most recent by-elections had to have been held due to the death of the Honorable H. Lavity Stout in 1995 and in 2005 when the Honorable Paul Watley passed away. And of course, the ownership, management, and staff of 284 News would like to extend our deepest condolences to the late Dolores Christopher. She will always be remembered. According to a recent Royal Virgin Islands Police report, the territory has recorded a 9% decrease in crime, according to statistics at the end of August. Michael Matthews, police commissioner, noted that recorded crime has been reduced by 23% over the last five years. What does that equate to? It's over 350 less offenses. Of course, we don't have thousands and thousands of offenses each year. At the end of 2017, we actually recorded just over 1,200 crimes for the territory, 
The point is that over the last five years, the trajectory of crime has been going down across a lot of categories, including some of the ones that cause the most concern, like robberies and violence, he said. The report recently handed over to the governor also reflects statistics that 45 in every 100 offenders get caught. The commissioner said for every 100 crimes that were committed in the territory, we were catching people in 45 cases and dealing with them through the criminal justice system. Some might say, well, commissioner, shouldn't that be sort of 100%? Shouldn't it be 80%? Of course, we will work on that, but the average around the world is considerably lower. While the efforts of the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force are to be commended, carbon crime requires a nationwide effort. Residents of the community is encouraged to report crimes and suspicious behavior on the confidential line 311. And in the regional and international scene, all across the region since the devastation of Hurricane Irma and Maria, educational infrastructures around the region have taken a hit. All stakeholders are working to rebuild schools. And just next door in Charlotte Amalie St. Thomas at a press conference, the MAP administration will be back at the bargaining table with the American Federation of Teachers local chapters, Governor Kenneth Mapp made known during a press conference. Facing an education crisis just over one month before the general elections that will determine the governor's fate, the press conference was an attempt to rein in the growing problem, which has so far included a number of job actions, not only because of salary matters, but also working conditions at schools. One of the other major issues raised by the AFT leaders was that starting salaries were too low in order to recruit and retain qualified teachers. Last month, Mr. Mapp issued an executive order that increased starting base salaries from teachers for teachers, sorry, from 34,000 to 44,000 annually. Some union leaders have now complained that this is unfair to current teachers. However, the governor has reportedly explained that he only has the power to increase base salaries and the wages of senior teachers must be addressed at the bargaining table. In addition, Mr. Mapp disclosed that Building B of the Charlotte Amalia High School had been condemned and that 15 classrooms were lost. Many of the problems experienced on the educational infrastructural front have been blamed on the immediate aftermath of the storms of 2017 that ravaged the territory. And it's important for us to know that all across the region, people are experiencing trouble as it pertains to the educational infrastructure, not only us here in the British Virgin Islands. Indeed. And on the international scene, recreational marijuana has been legalized in Canada. Many Canadians celebrated Wednesday, October 17th as marijuana was sold legally in their country for the very first time. Adults are now being allowed to carry and share up to 30 grams of legal marijuana in public according to a bill that was passed in the Senate in June of 2018. They will also be allowed to cultivate up to four plants within their households and make products for their personal use. It is important to know that marijuana will not be sold in the same locations as alcohol or tobacco and remains a punishable offense to minors. Despite export regulations prohibiting persons from taking marijuana products out of Canada, it is important to realize that Canada and the United States have had an essentially completely porous border, so this decision just might have implications for the United States, especially in border states. The Cannabis Act stems from a campaign pledge of Prime Minister Justin Trudeau to keep marijuana away from underage users and curb marijuana-related crime in the country. The Prime Minister mentioned that it's been too easy for our kids to get marijuana and for criminals to reap the profits. Today, we change that. Hundreds of people lined up in the streets to commemorate the occasion and to purchase their first set of recreational marijuana. Canada is the second country in the world to implement legislation permitting a nationwide marijuana market. The controversy over marijuana legalization has remained a forefront topic across many nations as the world examines its pros and cons. It is speculated that the BVI government ex is exploring same and it beacons the question of whether we should decriminalize or legalize the substance in accordance to our findings. What are your thoughts, Trevon, in reference to us locally exploring those options? 
I personally think there are pros and cons to the situation. I think uh, what's of paramount importance is that the government choose what's best for the territory. For the people, absolutely. And up next, we've got Ricky with what's happening in, in the entertainment industry. Of course, bringing you the 411. Stick around, you're watching 284 News. Hey, BBI, it's the Man Sick One Jubilee Jam with a scoop on the hot spots and what's going down on the weekend. As you already know, Kess the Band is making a long-awaited return to the BBI with Blacks on October 20th. So you don't know it's going to be, I feel like Hulk. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, you don't know your stiff walk. Hey, hey. Yes, CCT will be doing some free ticket giveaways this week. So make sure you follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all right? On October 21st, we're gonna be heading up to Island Sizzle to party with KI from Guyana. And then we're right back there again on the 22nd for the duck curry competition and barbecue. Wait, is, is duck curry or curry duck? So, hey, is duck curry or curry duck? A curry duck, oh, Okay, okay, cool, cool. So CCT will be in the building. The after work regular hotspots are still Popping. Tropics is always, always, always a good spot for socializing and some good drinks. If you want to go out a bit later, then you can check UTG, aka Up the Gut by Ramons. DJ Grimm is usually there and he has a place quite jiggy. Wait, I, I just said jiggy? I feel old, man. I need to, I need to say something better, something more youthful. Lit! DJ Grimm gonna be up there, he gonna got the place, yo. Give me some fire right here. Boom. Lit. That's what you're talking about, the man. All right. So for other spots, you can definitely check out Aromas or the new spot in Sickles Bay, the Playroom. Now, the Playroom is a cozy bar with some pretty girls and some pretty lights. You go for whichever one you want. Either just go down there because it closed them. My house. Yeah. So if you see me this weekend, let's link. You can buy me a drink. Tell me what you think. <laughs> I'm a rapper sometimes. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, see you guys next week. I heard CCT and Caribbean sellers are linking up to send a group on a cruise. But we'll get more into that on the next time. So, thanks for tuning in. This is the Mad Sick One with the Entertainment Report. It's What's Up and What's Up. Boo -boo -boo -boo. Bless up. And that's it for our entertainment roundup and of course this week's news viewers. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, that's 284 Media, for all your news updates. My name is Javon Wilson. And I'm Ron Grant. Be sure to join us again next week as we deliver honest and impartial news right here on 284 News.